comb my hair forward and, you know, think about running on a birther uh, ticket, you know, say I'm from New York and <laughs> do, I, I a, do a, a, I do an apprentice see, show. I don't see you corporate at all, but... Uh... Uh, but I'll let you respond to that. I mean, uh, you tell it the way you see it, don't you? You're not holding yeah. back, are you? No, I'm not holding back, uh, except that I will say that uh, one of the important things I've learned about prophetic messages is one has to time them to the right moment. One has to learn the art of timing them. So it's not holding back. It's finding the right time and the moment for the most receptivity. Uh, and that's a, that's a real tightrope because in my field, you're often telling people about things that they haven't even thought about or don't even understand because it's in the future, and you're often telling things to people that goes against what they expect in the future. It goes against who they want to vote for. It goes against what religion they want to have dominate the world. Um, and make a thousand-year peace, and and all these things that I write about. So, part of the problem is that it, yeah, I mean, the, the, one of the things people used to say is that I was somehow involved in Hen, with Henry Kissinger and his corporation and all of that, and I've never even met the man. Um, you know, so all of you folks who who put that out there really must take a look at. What you know is actual verifiable data and what may just be a imagined projection that suits a simple look at what is going on with me and this work. Because I get this hundreds of times. It's great the guy finally came through it. Nobody's afraid of saying it in my comments page at hogprophecy.com. I do read them all, and I do try to answer many of them. You have talked about the possibility of nuclear confrontation between the United States and Russia. Do you still feel that? Yes, it's the most important future danger that's the least anticipated. And I've been talking about it since the Cold War has been over because there is a pattern in collective prophecies, not just Nostradamus, but uh, other seers that say that there will be three world wars and they described, many of them described, long before these wars existed, they described the First and Second World War quite to a T. Same people in a collective prophetic thread say that there's a third one coming that everybody walks in with their eyes wide open. And Nostradamus in, has been a little more clear in his prophecies, at least to me, about that. And this deals with a trigger a, a war between a country called Amarish uh, or two kings, great kingdoms of the north. They're under the, um, the sign of Aquila, the constellation of Aquila. That's the eagle. So they are eagle kings of the northern hemisphere. Up until 1990, only America of the two northern pole powers, superpowers, and we have Alaska, they have Siberia and all of that, uh, was the Soviet Union and the United States. So the United States has the bald eagle as the totem, so there's the first Aquila. But the Soviet Union had the hammer and sickle until they collapsed and became the Russian Federation when they adopted the two-headed eagle, uh, updated from the Tsarist times as their animal totem. That says to me we are now entering the, the aperture opening of this potential future. The what undermines their friendship. These people are supposed to be trying to become friends, but the way Nostradamus uses his language, and I, I suggest you read Nostradamus and the Antichrist because it's a, it's a complicated thing. That can't We could do a whole hour just on this, the linguistics of this. The, the, the thing that happens is that they are trying to become friends, but they are undermined by a Babare source, Babare is an old 16th century word Nostradamus uses often for the Barbary Coast pirates of modern-day Tripoli, Libya. And Babare can also, by extension, be an anagram, a wordplay for the French spelling of Arab, for Arab. 
And he talks about an unraveling of the barbarie through the Middle East that drags Russia and America into war. He often talks about Persia involved in this. And I wrote an e-book called Nostradamus, the War with Iran, back in 2007 that looked at some of these issues about a war that could have happened then. If it didn't happen in 2007, it was going to perhaps happen in 2015, 2016 because of certain astrological predictions of Nostradamus. But they talked a lot about Persia being involved with the Babari Arab. And what that says to me is what's going on in the Arab Spring right now, hopefully what will happen is moderate voices will succeed where moderate voices in the Russian Revolution failed. You know, the Russian Revolution is actually two revolutions in 1917. It was a democratic revolution that was then overthrown by its own version of the Islamic Brotherhood, well-organized small party called the Big Party, but it was actually a very small party, Bolshevik. The Bolsheviks took over, and then you had the Soviet Union. There is a potential for this happening if the world doesn't help and nourish this thing happening in the Arab states right now. They could end up uh, collapsing into more extreme situations, which would put Europe under threat and pull Russia and America by their proxies, Israel and Iran, into a war in the Middle East that no one planned for, no one anticipated. And it could happen. The problem is the countdown is not clear. Is it three years and seven months, as some of the prophecies say, or does it happen 13 years from whenever this friendship breaks down over the Arab Babare people and their upheaval? So I'm starting to see something that I, I wrote a lot about it in my complete examination of Nostradamus' prophecies, a thousand-page book that I put uh, together in the mid-'90s. And I thought that that train of interpretation had hit a brick wall. I was really shocked to see, with the Libyan developments, a return of this prophetic thread, which I hoped it never would come back. Well, it's back, and we have to anticipate it, I think we have 13 years to make it not happen. Good point. Let's go to Albany, New York. Tina's with us on Coast to Coast. Hi, Tina. Yes, hi, George. Um, um, my husband and I are a great fan of yours. Thank you. I just got the tail end of um, the conversation. I just got out of Saratoga Hospital, but you have a lot of uh, fans there, too. Um, have um, John, have you ever had any dreams that you question or have ever seen anything like... You know, prophetic like, dreams? Yeah. So you're talking about prophetic dreams? Yeah. Have you yourself ever had anything? Or do you just, I'm just, I'm, I kind of thank George for, you know, bringing this to light. Um, do you, do you have them yourself? Or do you write of them and kind of speculate on? Oh, I understand are? now. Yeah. I know. And, and how, do, how, do, how does your prophecy come to you, John? I never asked you. I it's difficult to explain because it's not a dialectical this or that kind of thing, but simply if I were to use the most Zen short definition is I don't do anything. I simply <laughs> become it just happens. nothing. And in it's not me making the predictions. It's me being a very silent bamboo flute waiting to be played. So I'm not, if for it to work, and when it's really accurate and clear, that's the level in which I am not there in the way of it. And the it just so happens that it, it, it has transpired that this is happening in my life. It probably was enhanced by the practice of meditations that I've done since 1980. But meditation as such does not mean that it's a means to become able to do this. In fact, often when people write me saying, what can I do to learn how to do what you do? Uh, I want to be able to do what you do. Uh, I say, well, first thing is drop all ambitions and desires to do prophecy work because it, that's the ego. Just let that's, it happen. Let it happen. And what will happen most of the time is you can, everyone's a medium. In every moment of their life, whether they're doing important or mundane thing, things, the whole existence, that's what I've learned from this process, is I can apply this every moment to my life. 
it's it, and that is far more valuable than predicting the future because I live in the here now. Okay, let's. Uh, we have time. Yeah, we sure do. Let's go next to York in South Carolina. Roy is with us. Hey, Roy, go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. I urge every one of your listeners to uh, watch the 1981 movie of Not of uh, the Man That Saw Tomorrow. Oh shit, John knows that one. About Orson uh, Welles, yeah. About Nostradamus. Uh, see part nine where it shows where the missile strikes are coming from the Middle East mm-hmm. and coming to America, and we're seeing, sending up missiles, you know, Patriot missiles, which wasn't invented then, to destroy them. And we don't get all of them. We get some of them, but, I mean, this is just further proof, I mean, of what's to come. I got a minute to go, John. Yeah. Tell me about yeah, this. Yeah, Here, here's what I could say about that. Uh, the Man Who Saw Tomorrow with Orson Welles as the host is perhaps the best documentary ever done in Nostradamus. I've been hoping that sometime I could get together with some people and do something similar to that with me hosting it where we could really take it, like, take it to the next step. Next a lot of the things that were in that was quite beautifully done. And and with a little bit of camp from 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 Orson Welles, but a, what we see about the future says a lot about our times as much as about what actually will happen. So I would just simply say it may not exactly turn out to be what that movie said with the missiles hitting America from the Middle East. And once again, John Hogue in ten seconds, Barack Obama reelected? Yes or no? He will be a second term president. There you go. That's the prophecies of John Hogue. One of the luxuries of the program is we always can go back and pull out the old prophecies and see how uncanny they all are. John's one of our dear friends. We'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM with Patrick Heron as we continue talking about world prophecy on Coast to Coast AM.